time as well on the training pitch to take their time to get the concentration of all the players because don't just think that it's the Ndidi that scored that goal or the player or Brighton that's passing it. There's Johnny Evans that had a hand in it. There's, you know, there's Castagna that had a big hand in it. There's other players that are shifting. They're all trying to create a space. One's moving out for one to go in. It's, it's a team goal, that, even though it might appear only one or two players involved. So much, of course, that went into that goal. Let's look at 2-0. And James Madison scored this one, his sixth of the season. And that has to stem from the manager. I mean, you've got two teams there. You look at them on paper... In fact, look at their transfer fees. That probably is the best indication of all. I mean, there's no question Chelsea have got the best squad in terms of player for player. However, if you're watching that game, there's no way you can say, you know, that Chelsea are a better team on that evidence. Leicester have looked so much more dangerous. They've got so much more pace and energy and, and everything. A plan, it looks as if, you know, they work on a way of playing. If you ask me now, what 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 do Chelsea try to do? I can't really say. Oh, they're a build-up team. Oh, they're a counter-attacking team. Oh, they've got energy. I don't really still know what they are. Whereas Leicester, wow, it smacks you in the face. They're brilliant. So Brendan Rodgers, no doubt, will be extremely pleased with today's performance because his team are top of the table. But how does Frank Lampard reflect on today's performance? Great run of form not too long ago, and he's not wrong. A month ago, this team were flying. On the 5th of December, Chelsea actually went top of the table after beating Leeds. But the eight games that they've played since that time tell you the story. In those eight games, Chelsea have picked up seven points, whilst Leicester City have picked up 17 points and that really tells you where the turning point happened in their season and of course the rise and fall of both of these teams well this tells you the story once again interestingly Leicester have been pretty much more consistent Emil when we look at that graph but for Chelsea why do you think it has changed so dramatically I don't know. again it's it's um, going by what he's just spoke about there and he's talking about the basics when you're when you're a, a player You've got to earn the right to, to go out on that pitch and, and uh, you, no one's going to give you anything. No one's going to lie down and let you play. 1v1, you against that, that, that opposition, you've got, to, you've got to earn the right to play. If he's going to bully you, push you around, you've got to push him back. You've got to kick, you've got to, you've got to challenge. And we didn't really see much of that and that's probably what he was talking about. Them little basic things that you, you, you ask of your players. And you've seen it in the Leicester, but you didn't really see it from Chelsea. Do they just not know what they're doing? Is there no plan? Do you think there needs to be better direction? What do you put it down to? Well, it's interesting. I, I sympathise with Frank Lampard in a way, and I think he hit the nail on the head. With players, there's a mentality that you go win a few games on the spin, which Frank Lampard did. It was only a month or so ago, as that graphic just showed. And everything comes easy. It does. When you're winning, everything comes easy. But you've got to realise what's bringing you these results. And don't think, right, now we've cracked it, now we can just go onto the pitch and it, it, it works for us, we're all better players than them and things like that. It doesn't. You have to, the first golden rule, you've got to run and run and run and outrun your opponents and at least match them. Because if you don't do that, you know, then the skill element counts for nothing. You have to, you know, you have to match them in every... ...teams in your playing days. Do you think this team need to better work to the strengths of whoever the centre forward is. For example, if it's Tammy Giroud, if Werner's on the pitch, does it change? Do they need to do that part better? Well, I think if you look at different teams, they're all strong in different ways. You know, Leicester do rely on pace and, and hitting on counter-attacks, and they've got Vardy. You look at some like Tottenham, very much reliant on their top two. I don't think Chelsea are, are, are a team that necessarily rely on just their centre forward, because that man can be anybody. It can be Giroud, Abraham, as you've said, Werner. It can be a lot of different players. I think they rely on the collective. Uh, I think the fullbacks are used quite a bit um, in terms of attacking weapons. I think they've got some fantastic number tens like Pulisic. Havertz has still got to, you know, get used to the league. Uh, the league. He's obviously a, a class player, but I think they rely on on more of a, a team effort. And the team is failing at the moment. It's falling down. We've seen uh, some examples there, and we've also seen throughout the season, you know, the highs and lows that that they've had. So we. We know that they can do it. It's not like Frank Lampard's had a steady stream of poor results. They've had some unbelievable results, reached the summit for a, a brief period of time, but now they're in a slump and now it's really hard to get out of it. We talk about the team. If the team is constantly changing week in, week out, how can they ever get that level of consistency? They've made the third most changes in the league behind Manchester United and Newcastle. Could that be the problem, Emil? For me, that is one of the problems. Um, as a player, we've played in teams where... 
you want to play, as a player, you want to play. It doesn't matter how many games you're playing, you want to play. But do you that, want to play with the same team? The same team. The, because that consistency and that, that relationship that you build, that helps you go on, ongoing. But when you keep coming out, you're coming out for one game and then you're going back in for two. Then you're coming out for three games and you're going back in for one. You, you can't build up cons that consistency and that relationship as well. And obviously now I'm coaching as well. You, can, you get to see it from that side as well. Interesting, really interesting. Have you ever been in a team that's where a manager or where the club have brought in a huge influx of players and where it sort of disrupted what you've known? Well, I think we were in a generation when resting players first came in. I mean, when we, when we probably were both younger, 14, 15 year olds, there was only two subs, yeah. you know, and, and things like that. So there was never real any rotation. It was only around the turn of the century where this word resting players was sort of brought in, and, and I hated it. I, mean, I I'm bet not you gonna, did. I'm not going to lie. I, I didn't like it when the manager said, don't worry, I'm going to rest you for this one because you're going to play the next two. That's not enough. I want to play everyone. Um, so that was my mindset. But that's not to say it's the right mindset. And we're 20 years on now, and these squads are big. Man City, massive quality squad. Chelsea, massive quality squad. Man United, massive quality squad. Now, other teams go the other way. You know, you look at a team like Liverpool, for example, Leicester... You know, they, they very much play the same team every week, give or take one or two places. Same shape, same team virtually every week. So there are different ways of doing it. Yes, you could justify that saying, well, Man City are going to last longer because they're not relying so much on the big players. And also, if Man City got four or five injuries, I would still say they're still going to be the same next week. When Liverpool get four or five injuries, then I think, oh, no. Now, that's the advantage of being a Chelsea, a Man City and whatever, having a big, big squad. The disadvantage, it costs a fortune, very difficult to manage, lots of big stars. And the other thing is, how do you get that continuity, which is, is obviously a question. So there's pros and cons in them both. Chelsea have made their bed, now they've got a lie in it, and now Frank Lampard has got to work with that big squad, keep everyone happy and get results. And I guess now the preparation is on what comes next. Their next six games, well, it doesn't look like there's... A, an easy game for, for any for in any of that because mm -hmm. Wolves and Burnley at home will not be easy. But how important are those two home games for Frank? They're, they're huge. Um, no game now is going to be easy because again confidence, and he and he mentioned it there, trying to get the lads out of a out of a hole that they feel they're in, and that is that is due to confidence. That's not due to anything but confidence because they're exceptional players. They're wonderful players, um, but it's just getting that confidence to build them up and, and to, to go and play them games. So, pressure mounting on Frank Lampard, some important games coming up, but after the break... Frank, just how disappointing was that defeat and the manner of it? Got beaten by a better team. Thought they were sharper than us, ran more than us, showed moments of quality, looked like a team in form, we looked like a team out of form. Um, first goal disappointing from a set piece, second goal poor defending from us. And it's really difficult to come here when you're two down. Were you just not alive, do you feel, for that first period for both goals? Yeah, sleeping moments, yeah. But I thought it was uh, quite a lot of moments in the first half where our sharpness wasn't there. Sometimes that relates to poor form when players are not playing so well. But those are moments that you've got to dig in. And the basics and the bare minimums are to run and to sprint and to cover ground. And too many of our players didn't do it. Is that the most disappointing aspect, that the players didn't do the basics tonight in parts of the game? Yeah, I mean, you can break the game down afterwards. The most disappointing thing is to come here and lose a game. I know Leicester are a very good team. They can beat anyone. They're in good form at the moment. But, yeah, the basics of the game off the ball are important. Our game on the ball was OK at times, a bit slow. They made it difficult for us and we were content to go backwards. We created a few little opportunities, probably a little bit unlucky. I thought it was a penalty on the edge of the box. I've seen them given recently, but I'm not going to lean on a, on a decision like that. Our game wasn't there. If Saturday was a welcome step forward, was this another step backwards? Yeah, it's a loss, Jeff. It's just a loss. And, you know, we won against Fulham without playing brilliantly. We dug in a little bit, showed some character, played OK. Um, but then from that, um, you come and lose a game here again. So, yeah, it's a, it's a small step backwards, clearly. How worried are you about the slump at the moment? That's five losses out of the last eight. Yeah, yeah, worried. I mean, I think it's, you know, from the form that we were in to get so quickly into the form that we're now in, even with the Fulham win, and we've had some wins um, in that, but we should be better than that. Five losses in eight, that's not where we want to be, of course. Um, it takes character to turn from that. It takes character. We're quite a young team today, so they won't be feeling nice. I'm not against the lads in the dressing room there because... 
um, they're disappointed and, and they learnt a lesson about a team that are playing well and sharpness that comes with it. We were that team a month ago. We were flying against Leeds, energy, bundles of energy, quality, everything about us. And it's a big lesson for some of the players in there that if you come off it, if you think that you're fine, all of a sudden you think you, you realise you've got a lack of confidence, you've got a lack of maybe a little feeling to run because that comes alongside confidence and you've got to get yourself out of that hole. There's quite a few players in the team that will get, get themselves out of that hole. That will be down to you. You've already faced questions about your future. How much do you expect that to intensify off the back of, of this? Of course, of course. It intensified for me a while ago because expectations at this club, whether they're right or wrong, are always high. Um, I know we're in a different position now with the squad. If you look at our squad today and the age in our squad and looking for our season, the, the composition of our squad, it's a mixture of a young squad, a lot of players, some new players. And I keep talking about transition, but when we perform like that, it's normal that people will ask questions. Nobody knows this club better than you. Are you totally confident the owner will have patience with you and stick that's with not, you? It's not, my, it's not my decision, Jeff, and that's, that's something that will always be there. When I came into this job, or the job of management, you always understand that some things are beyond your control. Things that you can control are going again, trying to lift the players and trying to work hard. So that I can't answer. Are you in a bit of a quandary now as to how you get out of this slump? Because you want to try something different to change the results, but you don't want to change too much. No, I, I don't think it's... Um, we're not talking huge change in terms of system. I think if you go pound for pound, Leicester player against Chelsea player tonight, they were better than us, they were sharper than us, they had more confidence than us, they played forward more than us, they made more clinical decisions on the ball than us. That doesn't matter what formation you play, the game can be pretty much a match-up when both teams are playing 4-2-3-1. Sometimes it becomes down to you against your man. We lost individual battles all over the pitch. Um, those are the basic rules of football. So I'm not looking to change wholesale structure. Players in there, me, as you just quite rightly said, takes the responsibility, have to improve. Have to improve because where we were, two points off the lead, everyone lauding us, we're not there now. We're not there now. So we have to, to certainly regroup individually as a club and move forward. Well, he mentioned the fact that they were in